his question. I'd like to I bring to the microphone uh, Mr. Kabiru Adamu. Um, Your Excellencies, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, these questions are derived from your immensely articulate OB slash Ahmed Baba pact with Nigeria, creating a new Nigeria. It is possible. Um, that, I went through that document, and I must commend you for the work you put in making that document available. I have three questions. Um, the first one, you were silent on the correlation between climate change and insecurity. Kindly comment on this, given that climate change and the inability of government to implement adapt adaptive measures is likely to continue to drive insecurity in Nigeria. Uh, the Sahel, as well as glo globally, and this will, of course, impact Nigeria. Um, question number two. I, I think they should take that first, then we can come to that second one. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you want to take that question? Well, you know, on issue of climate change, I've said strictly that we'll follow the protocols, and where we think it is difficult for us to follow, we will discuss it. But there's already set protocols. You know, it's not something you adopt what you want or what you don't want. There's a set protocols that are agreed globally, and I will follow it religiously. And then where there's issues, we'll discuss it. And that's where I stop the issue of climate change. I don't want to go beyond that. Okay. Thank you, Excellency. Um, question number two, um, you imply that good governance will address insurgency and secessionist agitations in the country in the long term. But what is your stand on these issues? And what would you do in the short term to contain them? Well, like I said, in the short term, the issue of insurgency and uh, whether it's agitations and everything is to sit down and discuss with them. We're in a democratic dispensation. You govern by discussing, you govern by consensus, you govern by. So I will sit down and discuss with every agitator, without exception of them. We must use carrot and stick. I will discuss with those who want to change. I'm convinced that when they have reasons, you have to look at what is causing agitation today. It's issues of injustice. Issues that to do with that, where there's the void of fairness, issues to do with unemployment, poverty, everything. When you start addressing these issues and you engage them in a discussion, you start bringing them to the table. No agitator globally we have seen reason. A convincing argument that things are going the way it should be will continue to agitate because they're agitating for something. We all have agitators around us. My children, everybody agitates. But we sit down and discuss it. And when they see reason, they agree with me. But to think that you can continue with this injustice, continue with this unfairness, continue with this level of poverty, unemployment, and young people not knowing where the next meal will come from, you're going to have a crisis in your hand. What about those cases that are in court based on uh, failure of uh, conversations that yeah, you are to. That's what I'm saying. You know, we, you should you be president? Everybody. I will discuss with everybody. Even if you're in prison, the I'm going to bring you. Is that it, even, it, if you have been, even if you have been jailed, I will bring you out and we'll discuss. Because you don't, there are things you don't end up, only, unless after discussion, that's what I say, carrot and stick. We must exhaust reason before we apply stick. It is important. This is a democratic dispensation. You don't get up and just give orders. I won't do that. I will govern by rule of law. I will govern by, say it again, sitting down and discussing with everybody. Does that include uh, the Jamaat al ahli Sina al to World Jihad in the Northeast and the indigenous people of Biafra? I have to find out who they are. Once you tell me it is, if it's you, I'll come to you. I have exhausted reason. Once I know, once you can identify who you are, I'll discuss with you. No matter how, what you're doing, no matter the type of gun you're carrying, I'll discuss with you. It is after discussing with you that I'll now say there's one government. 
because I have been charged. But we must discuss with you first. Thank you, Excellency. Number three, what is your view on security sector governance, and how will you handle this if you emerge as president, but you are not in control of the parliament? Well, I think the parliament is there. They, too, are insecure. Nobody is safe. Not as if they live in a different country. So I don't think there will be a problem. They are kidnapping senators, they are kidnapping uh, legislators, they are kidnapping uh, president, and everybody doesn't mean to kidnap the president now. Everybody is at 